Hi, my name is Ricky Ott, and I direct ALERT, a project of Earth Island Institute. I'm also a survivor of the Axan Valdez oil spill, a commercial fisherman, a scientist, and an author turned activist. And I'm here to share with you some news that it's about a small something, but it actually has huge ramifications on the future of oil transportation and actual oil drilling in this nation. This might have slipped your attention. There's been a lot of focus on bomb trains, exploding trains, contaminated water, people getting evacuated, massive oil spills. That little something is that our national contingency plan, the framework for responding to oil spills across our nation, is up for public comment and review. We have until April 22nd. Why is this important? That plan, our national framework, was written over 40 years ago, and it was written for mostly oil spills at sea of conventional oil that floats. It doesn't really address what we do with unconventional oil and gas, the tar sands oil that sinks, the bomb trains oil that explodes. So what we're seeing across the nation right now with exploding trains and our waters like the Yellowstone River and in Illinois um, and more, getting contaminated, people having to be evacuated, alternative water supplies brought in. None of this is covered in our nation's contingency plan for oil spill response right now. And this hasn't happened where we've had a massive oil spill offshore where we actually added enough chemical poison to amount to the sixth largest oil spill in our nation. Now clearly this is not a plan to mitigate oil spill response. So right now, EPA is gathering itself from what lessons it has learned, and it has opened up the rules for public comment, our national contingency plan. This is a good thing, except for the fact that EPA is proposing a sea change in system thinking. It's proposing that we shift from mechanical containment and recovery of oil spills to increased use of chemicals. Really? We want chemicals in the Great Lakes. We want chemicals in our water and our rivers where we drink. The other thing that EPA is proposing is that after the Exxon Valdez oil spill, we learned that something huge was missing from our national contingency planning process. And that was a space, a pause for local communities, local people to infuse their knowledge and wisdom into the planning process. What are the places we would like to be, have protected? Where are our water supplies, our schools, our hospitals? What is it that, how do we protect public health? EPA is now proposing to usurp that power and relegate it back up to the state level planners. So alertproject.org is spearheading national effort to try to have our voices heard. It's time to speak up to protect our homes, to protect our waters, to protect the things we love, and let EPA know that we would like local knowledge infused into these local contingency plans, that we want ordinary people in charge. If the oil shippers, whether it's oil in the Arctic or in the Gulf or up and down our rivers, if they do not have viable contingency plans, Legally, under the Clean Water Act, they cannot be shipping the oil. So now is the time to weigh in with EPA, submit comments by April 22nd, support alertproject.org's comments, and let EPA know that it's important, you care. There are 135 million Americans who live within 20 miles of the coast of the Mississippi River and of our Great Lakes. These are oil corridors where we are currently shipping dangerous products through our cities and towns. Please weigh in and submit comments with EPA by April 22nd. Look for suggestions on how to do this at alertproject.org. Thank you.